Have you ever gone to a retail quick serve restaurant and waited too long for your food? By the time you pick it up, your fries are frigid, your burger is soggy, and the ice in your drink has melted. Oh. Or perhaps you order through the drive through only to get home and realize you had the wrong items. Building modern retail customer experiences like store analytics, operational efficiency, and personalization for our customers can be very challenging. The good news is that AI, modern infrastructure, and on-premise computing can help unlock use cases just like this. In this episode, you will learn how to achieve modern retail use cases with a fun and interactive demo showcasing order accuracy in the retail store of the future. Stay tuned. I'd like to introduce Mike Ensor, who will dive deep into the technical challenges, solutions, and lessons learned when it comes to real-world retail scenarios. Mike, please walk us through what you're going to show us today. Thanks, Cameron. In a moment, I will be showing you a demonstration that highlights the key components of order accuracy in a store using AI. But first, let's quickly highlight why we need the edge to solve this problem. For many developers, we have applications we need to run, but for one reason or another, they don't fit well in the data center or in the cloud. How do we decide where to run applications? I have made up a small decision tree to help choose where to deploy your application. Let's first start with the premise that your app should run in the cloud as it has the most flexibility and elastic scale. However, there are reasons we want to run applications in other places. Perhaps your application needs to make a decision in less than a few milliseconds, or you have to run at a location where your internet is intermittent, or you have very low or very expensive bandwidth. Or maybe you have applications that work with sensitive or compliance-governed data. Perhaps you have some of these use cases. As an example, you have an application that ensures employees are wearing personal protection equipment for a given environment, or you need to identify where the bottlenecks are in your location, or recalling relevant contextual training materials using your voice. All of these examples and more are possible with Google Distributed Cloud Connected. Google Distributed Cloud brings you an enterprise platform based on a managed Kubernetes cluster down to the locations where you need to run your applications that don't fit well in the cloud. This episode is all about running enterprise applications on location. Now, let's see an example of an application that lets us run on the edge to simulate improvements in order accuracy. In this demonstration, we'll show a common scenario at a quick serve restaurant. Cameron, imagine you're working at an expo window of a very busy lunch rush and you need to assemble your orders quickly. Showing an order fulfillment scenario is okay, but what's much more fun is to make it into a game. So let me introduce you to Price a Tray. Let's put my skills to the test. All right, so here's the rules of the game. You've got a tray, you've got a whole bunch of food items, you don't know the price of those food items. Your target is 1419. What you need to do is assemble the food onto the tray, let the computer recognize it, and price it, and try to get as close as you can to that target price as possible. Great, okay. You got 30 seconds to do it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's right. go. Let's go. All right, let's start with the burger. Okay, right. we'll try some of these, see these chicken wings over here. Right. And you're currently at 825, and you got about 20 seconds to go. Uh, we'll try these donuts. Not bad, okay. Uh, you're at well, 945. Uh, you fries. There you go. All right, so you gotta find something about three. You got about five seconds to go. How about these tacos? Yeah, let's try the tacos, a good idea. Let's see, where'd you end up with the tacos? Oh, that's really close. Man. 14.35, just slightly over, and you are in second place. Nice job, good 16 job. cents. Yeah. Amazing. Throughout this game, all of the data is kept within this location and not shared with the cloud. Another cool fact is that there's no GPU in this scenario. All of the inferencing is done locally, allowing us to maintain a low latency, compliant and cost-effective solution with AI on-premise. That was a really amazing demo, but I'm really getting hungry. But before we start eating food, let's talk about how GDC Connected makes this case possible. Now that you've seen the demo and understand the business cases, let's talk about how this was created and how to scale this to hundreds or thousands of locations. There's a lot we can show here, but let's begin with how to train and to get the model down to the edge. This diagram depicts how we can perform an end-to-end -end AI model cycle that is set up to be efficient use of technologies. We will refer to each of these components in a bit more depth. First, we start with taking data we want to identify in the model. For the Google Tacos example, we have a list of about 15 products. We take pictures of these items individually. 
then a permutation of items with some overlapping, simulating real-world scenarios. We then put these images into a GCS bucket as depicted in the diagram as training and validation data. Next, in Vertex AI, we create a data set to let the platform know where we have the data we want to be used. With the data set in place, we next want to train our model. There are multiple methods to train a model. This is known as transfer learning. You can manually retrain a model or automate the process using Vertex AI pipelines, which is essentially a managed Kubeflow instance. We will show an existing Vertex AI pipeline already set up for us. The pipeline will use the data set split up into images for training and validation, so we can test the model after it's been created. The final step of the pipeline is to export the model into TF Lite format so we can leverage this at the edge. The export process will push the model to a GCS bucket under the folder scheme. At this point, the model has been built and exported. Now we can focus on how the on-premise clusters get access to the model version so they can inference. For software configuration distribution, we are using Google's Config Sync tool, which is a GitOps pattern designed to scale deployments to tens of thousands of clusters by defining a desired state for each of our clusters. Each cluster then pulls a the configuration down and determines if there are changes it needs to make based on the cluster's identity. We can leverage this to distribute inference server and model configuration to each of our locations. On the cluster, we have a few options on how we want to use this model. A low complexity method is to set up an inference server that uses configuration to pull models from the GCS bucket and make them available over an API. To set this up, we use Kubernetes KRM configuration to establish an inference server and the config map to know where to pull model images from as seen here. If a dedicated inference server is not an option for you, you could embed the model into an application container and use config sync to pull the containers down into the cluster. The downside would be that all new images would require new container versions and running concurrent models would need to be addressed at the software layer. In our example, we decided to use an inference server so we could provide flexibility when deploying new and diverse models, keeping them independent from the application. While the application is running and we see results from the inference server, we have the opportunity to capture a small percentage of these requests to the inference server. We can capture the images as context and the results with the bounding boxes. Taking the feedback data, we can push this to a GCS bucket and use it for analysis. We can then use the feedback to analyze how effective our models are. Based on the identify labels and the request context, we can adjust the labels to match the appropriate responses and retrain the model. Over time, this cycle can be used to reproduce new, more accurate inferences or incorporate new items into the model. Let's pivot to talking about one of the other challenges we faced when inferencing at the edge. The price of tray is composed of four main components, the inference server, the game API, the RTSP feed engine, and the user experience. We just talked about the inference server, so let's focus on the user experience app and how we get images over to the inference server. We have a decision to make on who performs the drawing of the bounded boxes over individual frames so the user knows what's been identified. The first option is to have the inference server accept a full image, inference, and return a frame with the bounding boxes and labels added to the returned frame. This approach works, but is problematic for two reasons. First, when you want to adjust the frequency of inferences per second, you have to skip frames from the motion JPEG stream, then insert them in the inference frame at the right point in time. This can be tricky and will cause your video to be jumpy. Second, bandwidth is not infinite. Having the inference server return the full frame requires more bandwidth. You have to send the full frame to the inference server as well as return the full image consuming more bandwidth. Instead, what if we had the UI extract individual frames at a configurable rate, query the inference server for information, obtain only the label and bounding box coordinates, and then draw on top of the running motion JPEG stream so we do not transmit the full images round trip. In order to do this, we need to use two HTML5 canvas objects that are set up to be overlapping. The first canvas can run in a JavaScript loop with an image object and its SRC set to the motion JPEG stream URL. On load of the page, the image stream is started on the first canvas. The code then extracts single frames from the first canvas background image and submits these to the inference server. 
When we receive the detected information from the server, we can draw the bounding boxes based on the coordinates returned. Each time we call, we can clear the previous bounding boxes, giving the user the simulation of motion video bounded boxes. You will see an issue with this approach. You cannot both extract frames and draw 2D objects on top. So we need to add a second canvas to be layered on top to draw the bounding boxes and labels over the top of the motion JPEG stream. Decoupling the frame, inference query, and drawings from the bounding boxes allows us to independently update components to control frequencies of each request resulting in a tailored and efficient solution. Now that we've seen under the hood a bit, let's answer some pre-submitted questions that came from some of our customers. Today we talked about audio accuracy. What are some of the other use cases that you see customers using AI, cloud, and on-premises to solve different use cases? In this episode, we focus on order accuracy, and this is a very hot topic for sure. Another real common use case is around environmental observations, such as personal protection equipment, fall detection, and breaking glass. A growing trend we're seeing is related to contextual training where employees ask the system for contextual help on a given task, like, how do I construct this widget? The AI knows information and can provide a tailored response and instructions to that individual. Modernizing legacy infrastructure can be a massive lift for some customers, especially when they're trying to approach and integrate things like AI. What are some of the ways that customers can, can solve this? AI is unlocking so many opportunities for industries across the board. I would start by identifying use cases that fit well with AI. For example, AI can enhance the customer experience, assist staff, or detect irregularities for your business before your customer does. While AI is often a driver, you still have existing applications. Leveraging legacy data and adding new functionality like computer vision can be a minor change with a good return on investment. Choosing the right platform that can host legacy and cloud-native applications in the same ecosystem has operational advantages as well. No longer do you have the old and new system, you have one system using the same tooling, processes, and runtime. Amazing, Mike. So what are some of the ways that customers can get started with Google Distributed Cloud? You can learn more by visiting Google Distributed Cloud page on Google Cloud. Please check the link in the description below. You can also contact your account manager for options for your business. And as always, subscribe to this channel and watch for more videos about solutions built with Google Distributed Cloud. Mike, thank you so much for taking the time to show us this amazing demo today. My pleasure. Before the microphones pick up my growing stomach, I'm going to lunch. See you next time.